Hey, good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in this morning. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School, 744 Clifty Drive. Talking this morning, well, we're going to hodgepodge. Heather Foy is in. Good morning, Heather. Good morning. We will hodgepodge. We were just talking about what we were going to talk about, and I don't know. We'll go different directions this morning. Who knows? Yeah, it will fill up 30 minutes. There'll be no problems with that, indeed. Um, let's start with the cold, because I told you just a minute ago, I hate the cold, but I need to exercise. I need to do something. I need to be active. I don't like being outside, but I don't like being inside. What's a person to do? You know, um, I think you, you are going to have to adjust to some <laughs> flexibility, Tim. Oh, oh no. Um, we all uh, use excuses and we, mm. reasons why we don't do it. I would say probably the average adult, I would say their watch is their biggest excuse yeah. as far as not exercising. And that um, really would be 12 months a year. Right. Um, you know, I just don't have the time. I'm too busy. And um, in-home exercise is unique. And mm. um, I would say there's a small percentage of folks that can force themselves to do it and be faithful with their home training. Mel, we jokingly say those sometimes collect dust and they become a clothes rack. Oh, yeah. Because we have every intention of using them. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, it's, you know, the phone rings, mm -hmm. um, the laundry calls, you know, the, the skillet is cooking and right. kids are screaming. And especially for parents, in-home exercise can be challenging. And grand kudos to those who can set aside the time, put on that exercise DVD at home or, or make themselves do it without interruptions but I think for many of us I know you're an outdoor walker whether mm -hmm. you're a gym rat or whether you're a runner or, um, you know go somewhere for a yoga class whatever that may be I do think getting out and having a set time on the schedule will eliminate some of those excuses mm -hmm. as we talk about the schedule and our clock being our worst enemy if you can add it to that schedule so we always jokingly say you know it's kind of like a dentist appointment you're less likely to skip it if it's on the calendar, right. now the cold winter months, you know, adding in a little different factor, it can still be on your calendar. But when you look outside and you can see your own breath, <laughs> then then we begin to pile on the additional excuses. It's just too cold. And I will be honest, for some folks, it truly may just be too cold. Mm -hmm. I don't want a senior citizen out walking um, when there's a chance, um, you know, for slick road conditions. Sure. I don't want somebody with respiratory distress out walking in the bitter cold so we do need to factor that in I do encourage folks to find a an indoor passion and an outdoor passion mm -hmm. so that if I love hiking I may love to go to Clifty hike the heritage hike hatcher you know so many valuable treasures we have in our community but I can only do that you know eight nine months of the year mm -hmm. so I cannot be sedentary the other three to four months I have to find an indoor passion so you know it doesn't mean I'm gonna turn everybody into a gym rat right. you know I, I wish I could because I want them to have a passion for indoor strength training as well and group exercise classes which can be a blessing but you really do want to get over that hump and have an indoor outlet in case it is a rainy day in case the weather just doesn't permit you you know to mm. be outside so you know I think that's probably the first piece of advice even if you don't want to find at least one indoor outlet you know for exercise and even though you may dread those dumbbells you might eventually find a passion for it right. and keep that as a small part of your routine all year long mm. even when you can get outdoors you know for the the beautiful days as well um, definitely fact during in you know some safety tips with layering um, you know you think oh I'm gonna be all sweaty so I can't put on a coat well can you put on a coat and then just tie it around your waist if you get a little warmer right. you know hands and ears as you know are usually the two coldest parts that make outdoor exercise miserable so if you can start with gloves warm the head mm -hmm. have a hat you know and then remove those if you need to you know as the temperature begins to warm you know, so layering certainly and then for some folks you'll see die-hard runners at zero degrees wearing some type of breathable mask mm -hmm. you know just again to cover up the the nose and and warm the breath a little bit as right. you're as you're breathing in and then just be willing to make modifications you know for the weather that's so important it, it's 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 important to exercise and 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 I've had this conversation with multiple people before it's it's important to exercise 
but I think it's a, it goes a little bit deeper than you need to do something. You need to do something, yes, but you need to do something constructive that's going to help you do what you need to do. Absolutely, and I think for the seasonal stress disorders, you know, when we lose daylight and many folks are cooped up inside over the winter and they even somebody that claims, yeah, I'm not really an exerciser, but they will still admit they like mowing the yard. Mm -hmm. They like pulling weeds. They like going out for an occasional walk. Um, you know, that sometimes that you know seasonal depression can set in right. when we lose daylight and they just can't get out like you said to do things productive and i'm an outdoor and an indoor exerciser luckily i've, I've learned to love both mm -hmm. and i'm like everybody else there are days when my schedule gets the best of me or days i just don't feel like it or i right. put it off you know and i have to sometimes force myself to do it we all feel better after we do it even if it's something indoors that may not be your favorite outdoor runners that tell you uh oh, I don't like the treadmill, yet they feel better after they do it. And they'll admit, okay, maybe my three miles outside was more enjoyable with the scenery, but inside with my music or talking to the person on the treadmill next to me or with the TV in front of me, or, I'm just glad I did it. Right. They only regret the workout that they didn't do. Mm -hmm. So just making yourself do it. You know, and I have to factor in too, the seasonal weight gain. And I'll be honest, um, men, no, no offense, men are a little more guilty than women mm -hmm. when we look at seasonal weight gain. Sure. because a male might play recreational softball he might play some basketball in the summer more yard work you know it does whether he's cutting wood whether he's mowing the grass and and we are sedentary then during the winter months and if he doesn't have an indoor passion he begins to tell me oh I put on about 15 pounds every winter and then we work to get that off in the summer that's harder as we age when metabolism slows down men naturally lose muscle tissue a little faster rate during adulthood than women do muscles more productive um, you know and then you know what if we put on 15 but we only lose 12 or our doctor really wants us to lose 20 that cycle can really be a vicious cycle so I do think finding productive time you know outdoors in the in the spring Spring, summer, fall months is important, but we got to find a, a stress outlet and a physical activity outlet during the winter months as well. You mentioned the dumbbells too, and that's that's kind of a, a, a subject that I've talked about with with kids that I work in conditioning with for softball and and, and volleyball and and even at my age we we look at do I really want to lift weights? You know, well you're really not lifting weights per se. You're just trying to build some muscle tone. Yeah. And my husband has always said strength training is a fountain of youth. And I truly think he's right. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a hypertrophy, mm -hmm. you know, let me get huge deltoids program. Right. You know, it, when women finally, you know, the last couple of decades have realized, you know, you have to train like an animal to look like an animal. I promise your quads are not going to double in size if you do some leg presses or lunges. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you, you have to train very heavy, very strenuously to actually gain muscle bulk. And, and for many folks, you know, athletes, a certain muscle frames, that, that may be the desire and that's perfectly fine. But for the average person, if they're young and old, they need to add strength training as a part of their life. It doesn't have to be with machines. Now, one blessing with a gym is you're not going to get bored. Right. Because if I have only a pair of five pound dumbbells at home, I'm a little limited in right. what I can do. And, and five may not be enough for this muscle group, but it might be a challenge for my triceps. So obviously being in an, an indoor setting, I have a variety of dumbbells. I've got 30 different ways to train you know, my chest, my pectoral muscles, right. you know, versus just push-ups maybe at home. So you can use your own body weight. You know, we love the fact that now we know youth can actually participate in strength training. Sure. We teach our kids in the Fit Kids program through the hospital that, that you know, it used to be used to, you know, we thought you had to be finished with puberty and done mm -hmm. growing before we could put a pair of dumbbells in your hand, and now that's not true. Right. And if they're taught properly, you know, we know strength training is a valuable part for any athlete, not just a football lineman. Mm -hmm. uh, golfers have to have strong forearms and a strong torso and you know whether it's softball or, you know any sport in between now that lineman may be training differently than the receiver right. they may they're also going to be training differently in the off season mm -hmm. than the in season mm -hmm. um, so the accommodations have to be made and that's why having strength training specialists working by your side coaches hopefully they know what they're doing is a blessing but we love when strength training you know whether you're 80 years old you might have to be seated in a chair mm -hmm. with two pound dumbbells 
maybe I can't lift over my head because of a shoulder injury, but I can do this instead. Right. So that's why a trained instructor in a group class is valuable. And just educate yourself. If you're not willing to do a group class or work with a trainer or be in an indoor setting in a gym, you know, do your workout. Grab a magazine. Look at examples of exercises online. Get two pairs of dumbbells to right. start with at home. So you know, I truly am such an advocate. Um, I need to be doing more myself. <laughs> One of my goals is to be able to do some unassisted pull-ups myself this year. Yeah. I used to be able to, and a couple <laughs> shoulder surgeries later, I can't do that anymore, right. so I'm, I'm going to get there. So <laughs> it is so valuable. Heather just reminisced when we were back in the old playland at the old McDonald's before they rebuilt back where the big glass windows were at, and everybody drove by, and you waved at everybody. And in their pajamas. In their pajamas, <laughs> that's right. But you could only see, like, from the shoulders up, so that was, that was good. So anyway. Okay. Moving on, we're talking with Heather Foy this morning, and we, we talked a little bit of fitness. What else we want to do? Oh, gosh. You know, um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert in many areas. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I, I play an expert some days. Yeah, I understand. 10, I understand. But, um, I know we mentioned um, my, my dance program. Yes. And I've certainly been a guest in the past talking a little bit about uh, dance opportunities for kids. But my Flyers program, which mm -hmm. has been around since 2002, I've been coaching since about 94, but um, started my Flyers program in 2002. What, what's, what's the idea? behind strong. that you know I I, was, I guess the, the motivational yeah. factor for somebody that probably already had plenty on their plate to begin I with. know right yeah and in fact um, my son was born in February excuse me March gosh I'm a bad mom I can't remember his birthday March of 2002 this is when the Southwestern girls team was winning mm -hmm. state right. and I was still coaching a very competitive cheerleading program at that time at Southwestern and we were not only competing ourselves but traveling postseason with you know the boys and girls team mm -hmm. and you know I had a baby a little early yeah. and my husband I when I had this in my back pocket I always wanted to start a dance program he said can you like wait one year and I was like no I think I'm actually gonna start it this fall <laughs> I did I did start with one team had a high school team for six years mm -hmm. decided to take a step back because there weren't a lot of youth and dance opportunities and as girls were coming to me they didn't know what double turns were they'd never done a split leap some of them were just athletes in other sport and loved to dance some of them were cheerleaders and love to dance so we took a step back with the younger ones but I was a dancer and a, and a cheerleader in college and you know had um, had an opportunity at a small division three school and then opportunity to um, you know, earn some scholarship money and be able to be in front of a big crowd at UofL and you know mm -hmm. that, a lot of memories um, sure. you know, such a blessing for me and um, I'm very grateful for that opportunity and the connections it made for me as well and helped me get into some judging of some competitions too at the at the time and working some various events around the country I taught camps um, all over the country right after high school I was 17 years old and head off to Kansas City for a training camp and travel the country teaching camps for many years and just a, a lot of connections were made and mm -hmm. I saw the sport of all-star cheerleading grow and now fast forward decades later it's unbelievable the growth and then that's called the spirit industry so then all-star dance began to unfold and I'll be honest and um, working out of just either a gymnasium um, you know if you're not in an all-star training facility mm -hmm. the equipment to keep up with cheerleading needs um, you know is, is um, really puts you at a disadvantage sure. so even my high school cheerleading program when you have just a couple panel mats mm -hmm. you don't have trampolines and spotting belts and foam pits and you know, we do have a great gymnastics training facility in town and they focus on that um, but it really felt like um, dance was a passion for me um, the risk of injury was a little lower yeah. Um, with with dance as compared to cheerleading, so yeah, that's really why I decided to start this dance program. It was an easy um, opportunity for me having a fitness center here in town. Mm -hmm. So uh, it really gave gave me an opportunity as well to pull girls from various schools, and that's been fun over the years to see a few walls been broken down. You know, when Southwestern and Madison particularly have some competition and rivalry between them, but to pull girls from various schools, yeah. I now have girls. I've had girls over the years from. Switzerland and, and Ripley County and girls that are homeschooled so this gives them a great opportunity to meet kids from various schools and make new friends um, with a structured activity so you know fast forwarding now I've got six teams of eight coaches that work with me all of them are girls that I coached you know, in the past a um, couple of high school girls that are coaching for me as well and I'm also coaching on my senior team so it really um, has been a lot of fun and a lot of memories and I hope uh, some great exercise opportunity for girls it's, over the years. It's, and, and this is an opportunity, 
you don't have to be a, a a gymnast or a cheerleader to participate in something like this. That's right. And my program is a little different in the fact that we don't have significant cuts made. Mm -hmm. Similar programs, um, I'll speak of one in the Cincinnati area, um, just for their what are called mini level, which is typically about second to fourth grade. Um, you know, they have hundreds of kids trying out. Many cuts are made. Right. Or if you don't make the competitive team, you may just be in a recreational class. And, you know, we just know in this area, parents can't pay $400 a month. Um, you know, parents don't want to have practices six days a week. You know, my coaches don't do this full time, nor do I. This right. is one of my many part time jobs. <laughs> so we do keep it pretty recreational. Mm -hmm. And yes, that puts us at a little disadvantage when we go to competitions, but I'm okay with that. And I've learned to let some of that go over the years. We, we do want them to take pride and be good at what mm -hmm. they do. We don't take pride in sloppiness and kids not knowing their material, but when all is said and done, my parents, I think, appreciate the fact that their girls are sweating mm. and smiling when they're at practices. So they're not sitting around waiting to do one little pirouette. Um, you know, they get a lot of exercise when they're with us, right. even some conditioning. So, you know, are they going to dance professionally? Probably not. Mm. I've had a handful dance in college. Right. You know, Olivia Rostam, you know, I had a blessing to dance for the Colts as well. You know, and that's been, been a fun to see her success. Sure. And she's now coaching in the Fishers area. But most of these girls, I hope, just find a passion for exercise. Mm. They're going to improve their flexibility ability, improve their strength, um, you know, be proud of what they're doing and, um, it, you know, Again, some of them are going to use that athleticism to also be able to participate in some other activities. That's one other thing I take pride in. Many other dance programs in bigger cities, you're all in, meaning you can't also be on your school's softball team. Right. You can't also, you know, be in show choir or have a part-time job. This is all you can do. This is oh, your wow. life. And again, after high school, then where does that take you? It could you know, provide opportunities. I've got, I know at least one high school dancer now that would love to dance in college, and she has the capability. But I. Want want girls to also be able to have passion for other opportunities and put their family first and their faith first in their school, you know, and still be able to squeeze in dance. Uh, flyers, uh, I know at the end of the month is your showcase. I was involved with that last year. It was a lot of fun to watch. Six teams, you said? You, is that what you've Yes. We have kindergarten through 12th grade. Yeah. Six teams again this year. And um, it's a busy month. January and February are always busy for us. I have two teams performing at the afternoon boys game mm -hmm. at Madison High School. Don't know if you'll I'll be, be there. over there yes, for that. Absolutely. Um, you and I are all over the place. Uh, <laughs> you'll see a couple of my teams over there today. Mm -hmm. We've got a few out with illness. My gosh, it's um, yeah, yeah. it's spreading around. But yeah, we, we have a very busy month with performances. That's a lot of fun getting to show off locally. Mm -hmm. um, routines. The competition circuit has changed a little bit. Um, there are many big national programs and as I mentioned, kind of referring to finding a balance with a rec and a competition program, we're not a program that travels to Orlando this week and Texas next week. You know, there are some programs out there that come with big, big dollar expenses. We try and find a couple smaller events that's hard to do, um, to keep costs down and not have to travel too far. And there's not as many smaller competitions out there. We lucked out, and my senior team did well at a bigger event in Indianapolis a week ago. And then I've got some teams traveling to a competition a week from tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, that, that will be a lot of fun. And then we do culminate with this end of season showcase, very similar to a recital. But we try and beef it up a little bit, mm -hmm. and we've had some fun, and um, we'll mimic again this year. We have an alumni dance, oh, which yeah. will be a lot of fun, so we need to talk your daughter into doing that. <laughs> Good luck. But, yeah, we. that's a lot of fun. Yeah. I had about 20 alumni, you know, girls that are... You know, in their 30s, and and some girls that even you know just graduated within the last few years, yeah. coming together, they actually learn choreography through, via a video, <laughs> and then we come together for just one practice yeah. before we actually perform. We did a parent dance last year. That was a s complete surprise to their little daughters who had a mm. jaw dropped watching yeah. mom dance in front of a big <laughs> audience. I'm telling you, the moms were so nervous. Yeah. They were back in the back hallway practicing, and the little girls didn't know what was in store. <laughs> the coaches always come. Up with a fun coaches dance as well so um, it will be a great opportunity for local folks to come and see what flyers are about I always tell parents who say well you know she's thought about flyers you know can you tell me a little more I, I want to be honest and transparent it's not a traditional tap jazz and ballet mm -hmm. program and, and there are great places in town that offer that this is um, typically 
palm, sometimes hip hop focus, very athletic in nature, fast pace. So if you want to see what it's like, come to the showcase. Right. It gives you a chance to watch all six teams perform, a few of these extra fun um, routines as well. Uh, you know, last a couple hours. I promise it's more entertaining than a movie, but it is at Madison High School in the gymnasium on Sunday, February 25th, 3 o'clock start time. Uh, so we'll certainly get some information out there via, you know, our, yeah. our um, media outlets and, and social media as well. So we'd encourage anybody that wants to support Flyers, if you know your neighbor is a Flyer or yeah. you think your daughter may be interested or you want to see what it's about, please come. And, and a good opportunity to see. And, and sometimes... You, you don't really understand or, you know, I mean, you can tell me, okay, this is what it's all about. I need to see it in order to be able to relate. And a lot of folks are like that. What about um, how early can they start doing flyers? We start at kindergarten, and mm -hmm. I do get a lot of requests for preschool. Um, I wish I had more time. Yeah. In my, if this were my full-time <laughs> job, not my fun job, I could. But um, all my coaches, you know, are working or full-time students or full-time moms in, in the career force. So we don't right now have mm -hmm. that opportunity that is a great age with development coordination but we focus on that with my kindergarten first grade team they're called the tinies <laughs> and they practice once a week mm -hmm. they do a few local performances they don't uh, typically compete but at that age we are working on coordination you know being able to kick your left arm and move your right arm at the same time at that age just knowing your left from your right <laughs> on basic rhythm principles so it's a few things they might see at school with minds and minds and motion type activities and mm -hmm rhythm things they may be working on but using their physical bodies and already um, instilling kind of the importance of flexibility and um, some you know core strength work as well so mm -hmm. tinies are a lot of fun our mini program we have two teams we split girls up um, into you know not not a traditional a and b they don't have to compete but they're split up into what we call our silver and our teal team one has a little more intricacy as far as choreography and more skill development and our silver and teal team you know typically each have anywhere from seven to eight up to 12 girls on those teams. We have a youth team that's normally um, sixth up to seventh grade, fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, depending on ability level where their birthdays fall. And again, we have two teams for our youth teams as well. And then our senior team. We're hoping next year to be able to transition and add back in a junior team so that tough middle school age, they may not be ready yet mm -hmm. to try out for our high school team, which is the only team that has a tryout process. But that junior team would be really more junior high age. So right. yeah, a lot of opportunities. Our season goes from August to February. Mm -hmm. We like that break in the spring and summer. We do typically offer a summer clinic, a little workshop, camp and that gives parents a chance well before I commit to a seven month season right. can we try it one day just to see if she'd like it right. um, so anybody that's interested you can certainly contact Fit for the King contact me I'll add you to that email group list so that when those summer opportunities come out we can send you some information about that and um, you know hopefully wet your taste buds a little bit and right. maybe get you interested in flyers has the interest increased over the years I think so especially with the younger ones mm -hmm. and and you know I do encourage them to start at a younger age. Now you can start at that high school only, but if I have zero dance experience and I show up for tryouts, it may be a little overwhelming. Right. We don't want parents sending, oh, my daughter's not good enough. You know, send them, let's give it a try. And I know that tryout process um, you know, can intimidate some. You know what, at that junior high age, that's when you begin, that's life. Yeah. You have to try out for the junior high basketball team. Unfortunately, cuts are made. Um, the good news is sometimes there are still recreational opportunities available. So if I don't make the eighth grade basketball team, I may still get to play in a rec league at the Boys and Girls Club, right. you know, or work hard to try it again next year. We don't want kids to give up completely on exercise. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we, we still hope that even at an older age, they'll be brave to give it a try. Um, but it's it's never too late to try. And, and that's kind of a, an interesting point, too, because you, you that is the transition into junior high and, and that particular due process. But to see kids come in and, and, and make the effort and make the attempt and maybe fall a little bit short of, of what skills they need, but that's something that you can convey to them and they can come back maybe next year and try it again. That's right. And you know, dance is a little unique. We see this with all-star cheerleading as well and even, honestly, even high school cheerleading. Mm -hmm. So if I have a child on the basketball team and if he sadly misses practices, whether it's an, an important illness, you know, a family obligation, important like a funeral, or he ditches, if he misses practice, he's probably not going to be on the court at the next game. Right. And, um, or he may not be star. he may lose his starting position, mm -hmm. you know, if he doesn't give effort at a 
of practice that impacts his playing time and and parents understand that they may not always be happy with it right. but they understand that and kids do as well that's a little challenging and we have to find a balance mm -hmm. maybe I'm not as hard as I need to be sometimes in dance if a girl misses a practice whether it's her fault whether mom forgot practice whether she just ditched um, it's sadly if we have a performance in the next week if we pull her if she is not ready if she doesn't know the material if it's sloppy she's not ready to be out there it sadly impacts all the girls there's a hole in the formation the ripple group is not affected it has a partner part where you need two girls to perform and now one is on the sidelines parents also sadly sometimes with something like dance have the pay to play mentality right. I'm paying so you're supposed to put my daughter out there right. and that is a challenge mm -hmm. because we have every ob obligation as coaches if a girl's not ready you know, we can pull her she can sit on the sideline but it unfortunately negatively impacts everyone right. if there's not a sub there's not an alternate there's not a six man to throw in like there is in the basketball sure. court now the six man may not be your best but right. they're all going to learn a lesson and you hope that starter gets himself back out there next time so that's a balance with with dance it truly is mm -hmm. and as you know coaches we, we're deciding whether we should transition even definitely more to an, an a and a b team process you know where even at a younger age kids aren't cut but only x number of girls make a team that actually goes to competition the other team just performs maybe locally and right. on a lower level so you know that's always a balance with a program like this keeping an opportunity available for any kid that wants to do it even if god didn't bless them with good natural rhythm or, or you know coordination you know that that does happen sometimes and that girl's probably not going to be in the new york ballet at some point in her future but we still want to give her a chance to dance and have a smile on her face but she may not be at that competitive level so yeah it, it brings a, a different um different mindset you know in decision making but but for flyers we do want to welcome everyone especially for those younger opportunities and then yes at that junior high age um you know, that that is life that's just what happens i think from a health perspective and as a when i wear my wellness coordinator hat i want parents and grandparents to help their kids just find a good exercise outlet maybe they can take martial arts mm -hmm. you know this sport may not be their forte but maybe they can try this instead you know, aim sure. toward a lifetime activity like tennis and golf and hiking and weightlifting and you know, so yeah we just want every kid to find something they're passionate about let's talk uh let's go to girls on the run Let's, let's talk okay. about that. We that's I, I love that program. I yes. think it's really important. I know a lot of the young ladies that's participated in it, and they just keep coming back for more. It, it is such a unique program. We're really blessed. We are. There's about a dozen councils in Indiana. Proud that our small community has it. It is for girls in third to fifth grade, and we are a fall-only season. Mm -hmm. That's primarily because of the uniqueness for this community and the Molly Dottillo run in the spring. And, and we love that event. We love um, what that um, event has done for this community, encouraging um, youth running and, and also um, honoring Molly's legacy mm -hmm. and supporting the Dottillo family. And that program, that run, the Molly Dottillo run continues to give back in scholarships into the area schools cross country and track programs. So we want to support that in the spring and then all the elementary schools have running clubs. So we offer Girls on the Run in the fall. And as you know, it's more than just a running right. program. So all the trials that that young girls face, media pressures, you know, self-esteem issues, bullying, self-confidence, helping girls celebrate what makes them unique, and just celebrating being a girl. Um, we want girls to have that empowerment, and that's what this program offers. So it is a curriculum base. They don't even realize they're running. Yeah. Well, they may realize they're running, but that comes secondary to the valuable life lessons on teamwork, you know, today and cooperation, listening skills. I mean, that we're actually focusing on respecting yourself and others so we're pretty blessed all of our elementary schools now except Christian Academy Madison had a girls on the run site this past fall we're hoping to add them this fall mm -hmm. and then a few of our sites because we're spreading out at every school they're not quite full so we can take a few more mm -hmm. our biggest message we need to get out is that the program even though it is costly to operate we have scholarship money available mm -hmm. so the, the believe it or not the average national program fee right now is $185 for 
for this season. Um, it costs about $160 to operate that program. We charge $100, and then we have a 50 and a 75% reduction. Um, you know, so a parent can pay just 50, they can pay 25. If I had a grandpa once that said, I can only afford to pay 10, he turned in $5 at the beginning of the season and $5 at the end. And and that, I hope, um, when they're paying even a little bit, helps helps them be accountable to showing up for practices, sure. not losing their t-shirt. You know, grandpa or mom or somebody shows up for the 5K to support the kids. But we're so appreciative of the school support. We are always looking for new coaches. So it, you don't have to be a parent of a third to fourth grader. That is fun, where you get right. to work with your daughters. And we do all the coaches training and background checks. We provide everything for you in the curriculum so you'll find success and feel confident to be able to coach. We love it when teachers coach because they're right there after school. So you yeah, have any coaches out there, parent, you don't have to be a parent. If you just want to help girls find a passion for celebrating being a girl, contact me. We can help you get involved in Girls in the Run as a running buddy, as a coach, you know, as a volunteer in some way. Uh, we do that recruiting early on so that we're ready to roll. Right. The season typically starts the week right after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. We spend the first month of school promoting and registering girls in August. And then our 5K is typically right before Thanksgiving, a culmination of the 10-week program. So, yeah, it's such a dynamic program. You can learn more about it at girlsintherun.org. There's some unbelievable national partners involved as well. And, of course, um, because of the national program and our everything from insurance to curriculum copyrights and all the materials, it, it is costly to operate. So we're always, of course, seeking sponsorships and dollars for support. I can't thank King's Daughters enough for being your in-kind presenting sponsor and all that they do to support that program. Um, so please let me know if there's a way you'd like to get involved. Yeah, again, support Girls on the Run. Of course, uh, all all the fitness and running and dancing and all that you're involved with, thank goodness there's eight days in the week you never get through it. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I wish God had given me eight, but I sadly just have seven. I have 24 hours a day like everybody else. I just have to maximize those hours. Don't know how you do it. Hope that he continues to give me energy. Yeah. One thank of these days I'm going to retire those pom-poms. Um, yeah, not any time soon, I'm <laughs> sure. Thanks for being on the program this Thank morning. Thank you for having me. All right, that's Heather Foy again stopping by Coach's Corner this morning. Thanks to her. Thanks to Jordan Barron Studio. I'm Tim Torrance. We'll see you next time for Coach's Corner here on Works 96.7.